How proud are you that Cash Money is that, you know, a lot of labels have had a lot of great runs, you know, like dominant for years, but, you know, you guys started late 90s and you still prominent, redefined yourself, adding the young money to cash money. Like, how rewarding is that to think that cash money records is still at the forefront of the culture? Man, I mean, it's still unbelievable every day. Every day, just to see Baby and see Slim and just to know that we still in the studio and we still on the road doing this. You know what I mean? Like, that is still, it's, it's still unbelievable. I have no words for it other than unbelievable, man. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Like I said, I, till this day, I still see Slim smiling about music and still see Baby impressed by what I'm, about music he, he hearing about me online. I'm like, man, we still doing this. And then, like, to know that we still relevant, we ain't just doing it for ourselves, we doing it because we actually have to. And we have to be for the people, for the fans. And that's, that's more, I mean, like I said, it's unbelievable. You and Baby, your relationship, you know, almost father, pops. son. Pops. Pops. Yeah. How does it change? No like, is it similar to like, how does it? How's the relationship changed through the years now? Like, I, as a child, you grow up, and that's still your father. Like, how does how's the relationship with you? Oh, it's now? simple. You know, back then, he come pick me up in his bins. Now, <laughs> I come pick him up in mine. <laughs> that's simple. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Um, like any other father son relationship, man. You know. Respect become, you know, the father gives you more leeway. You can get more respect from your father. You need to do other things to impress him. He's used to, you know, you're a man. You got to show him that you're a man, and you got to do things to impress him. And I still do that today. And for my mom. Yeah. You know I mean, she still have to, you still have to impress him. You still have to impress your parents every day. That's your toughest crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And you carry that forth with your kids. We talked oh, about fatherhood a little what? bit. You already know. Because yeah. I've seen some of the tweets. You, you rarely tweet. You mostly tweet about sports. Yes. <laughs> or some skate. But, Oh, yeah. Skating yeah. and being a proud father. Yeah, exactly. So those those are the to me the, the essence of Little Wayne the man. That's who I am, man. Yeah. That's who I am. A proud father first. I'm I'm just Cedar Carter's son. That's my beautiful mother. A proud father, and I'm Cash Money Millionaire's young money CEO. That's, that's a good resume. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Thanks. sports, man. I think people yeah. call you a sports fan, but I think that's an injustice. You're more than a sports fan. Oh, way you, more than a sports fan. Because you're also very knowledgeable about it. Like, I try to be. I, I mean, it's not, I don't, I mean, it's a passion. So it's not, it's not nothing that I have to go study or nothing that I do special or anything. It's just a passion. So when you're passionate about it, you just, I mean, I guess the knowledge comes. When did the beginning of it, like in uh, your childhood? Like, what yeah. are some of the earliest memories you have of sports that kind of really made you excited about My it? grandmother. My grandmother, Mercedes Carter, she passed, but um, she was super into sports. You know, every day it was, we watching some, whatever on. I mean, if it's golf, whatever. She, I mean, she wasn't into watching the stories. I don't know if y'all call them the stories, soap operas. Soap operas, yeah. Yeah, she wasn't, you know, if, if when the music come on, when the stories, when the music come on, she cut that shit off. You know, <laughs> so, so, you know. <laughs> That's how I got it. My grandmother. Then I used to go next door um, by this, by my next door neighbors, Miss Willie, and um, I just lost Cynthia. That was like my second mom. I, yeah. Sorry about that. It's all good. But um, I used to go over there and hug her dad. And I used to go. He's still living. His name pops. He used to be doing the same thing. Nothing but sports. But he used to like Star Trek too. I don't know why. Yeah. But it was sports or Star Trek, and I used to go cry on his uh, paws. No, 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 no. <laughs> I used to go, I used to go cry on his chest when my grandma was being when I was mad. My grandma first said, "Man, I had nobody else to go cry to," so he'd be watching Star Trek or some sports shit. So that's how I got into sports. So who were some of the early athletes you saw that impressed you? Like some of your favorites as a kid? Did you have posters on your walls? Like who, who yeah, was you a fan um, of when you was Dion? Dion Sanders. Yeah, Dion Sanders. Of course, Mike Jordan. Of course, Mike. Um, man, Isaiah Thomas. Um, I was a huge Dominique Wilkins fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to love Dominique. And um, I don't know, I was a big old Clyde Drexler fan, <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, man. I used to love Clyde, man. 22 pistol in the holster. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I think I wrote down your teams, man. Correct me if I'm wrong, man. Your baseball team is the Boston Red Sox. Big B's. Now, why Boston Red Sox? My, my favorite pitcher is Pedro Martinez of all time, and uh, 
my favorite uh, players of Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz, and when they had that run, I mean, when they was all on the that was that's all I knew about. That's all I saw. Yeah. And I ain't never, you know, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a lawyer person, you know. <laughs> Cash money. If I, if, I, if, I, if I fucks with you, I fucks with you. Yeah, you should put yeah. the photos up with you and Ortiz, too. I, I saw yeah, yeah. If I, so if I fucks with you, you know, you, as you can see, I'm, I'm loyal. Ladies, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, I still can't figure that out, though. I was going to say, you getting married yeah, again one day, man? Uh, I thought this was an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Why are you so, asking me bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Football. Green Bay Packers. Why? Yeah. Green, Why Bay Green Bay Packers. Bay? I'm a Brett Favre fan. I was a huge Brett Favre fan. And um, I, like I said, I'm loyal. Been a yeah. cheesehead. Um, they came to the Super Bowl. That's what happened. They came to the Super Bowl in the Superdome, like I think 95 or 96. And my dad, my late, my, the late um, Rabbit, my Rabbit. dad, yeah, he went to that Super Bowl. And he came home like with... I was a kid, so, you know, he came home with a whole bunch of stuff for me, like towels and cups and, you know, and I think Green Bay, my, I think it was all Green Bay. It, whether they won or not, it was all Green Bay stuff. So from that point on, I was a Green Bay fan. And Baseball. the Saints wasn't too good, so it was cool. You know, you needed, at that time, as a Saints fan, you needed another team to be a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> at that time, yeah. And finally, basketball, you, you riding with the, the yellow, I'm purple and yellow. I'm still riding with my Lakers, man. Tough I'm, season, I'm man. I'm a loyal nigga, man. Yeah, it's tough. I ain't tripping. I know we going to get Ooh, we going to get right on you bitches. <laughs> uh, we going to get right. I can't wait, boy. This nigga Phil want to go by the Knicks, huh? All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I see how it's popping. You ready for the payback? It's all, I went to a Clipper game the other day. Yeah. yeah, man. I you was allowed like, to do man. that, man? It's a Lakers fan. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had fun. It was a great game, too, man. Them boys playing. Yeah. Them well, Chris Paul's playing. a homie, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the brother. That's my brother. Yeah. yeah, one of the first people that came to see me in the hospital. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Not, not to be a sour thing, but last year with the health scare and stuff like that, yeah. it was crazy because it was around time we were here at South By, and I remember, okay. like, all these reports was coming out and forces. I remember being backstage at Fader Fort, and I was with, like, Pharrell and Solange, and they asking me, like, what's going on with And I'm trying to get on the phone to find, you know, people yeah. expect me to know, right, right, right. you know, as a reporter, like, you know, it's just crazy to be with you a year later and, and overcoming that situation, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah. I'm glad you're in, in good health. Thank you, brother. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. Thank you. Another hard time, obviously, was, was the situation at Rikers. I know you're writing a book. Like, can you tell a little bit about that book? I'm is? not writing a book. Um, okay, maybe clarify they, that. What happened? No, what happened is they making a book of. I wrote. I kept a quote unquote like a journal or something when I was in there. Yeah. And it was only on. I did that for myself just because I wanted to. I had shit. You used to be so bored in there, so you do all kind of shit you ain't think you'd do. So <laughs> I start writing shit down every day, and so you know. Taz, my man, he thought it'd be a, a good idea. It was like, you know, man, if you don't mind, like, you know, if you could give me every what, those pay, those shits that you wrote every day, I could, <laughs> I could make a book out of that. You know, people want to see that. And I was like, honestly, Taz, I was like, I ain't do nothing. I was like, it would literally would just be like, yeah, I went to the day room today, played cards, I whipped the nigga ass in Uno, uh, <laughs> you know, like shit like that. Like, and he was like, man, if people want to read that, I was like, you sure? And I was like, I guess, whatever, you're you never wrong, my nigga. So that's what the book is going to be. So like I said, I ain't writing no book. Now my daughter, she wrote a book, her and yes. Bria. Yeah, they wrote yeah. a book, but I ain't, write, yeah, I ain't writing no book. I mean, that's what the book is, my jail journal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, right, because sell 20 <laughs> <laughs> Was that was that rough that transition? When nah, you, man, back? them dudes cool as hell, man. Yeah, nah, it wasn't rough at all, man. Them dudes cool, man. Everybody in there was cool. I didn't meet not one sour CO or not, none of that. Everybody was cool. Yeah, everybody was cool. So I don't know if they made. I mean, they made it. I ain't gonna hell no. It didn't feel like home, but they made it cool. You know, because I, mean? I was shocked when you like. I remember like it was, it was like were you gonna take it to trial, and then you did settle and decide to accept the plea. And I remember. Yeah. I went to the courtroom that day when you went in. I just couldn't believe that you was gonna go in. Like it was just. Why did you decide that that was the best thing to kind of take the to take the deal? Uh, cause at the time, you know, I mean, it's New York, and they don't. They, you know, this my interview. Fuck it. It's New York. They don't play with them niggas, man. They don't play with niggas, man. They rappers too with them pistols. Yeah. I don't play with a nigga. Like, my nigga, it was 13 of us on the bus. 
You know what I mean? Like they literally came to us and was like, you they 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 was blatant, they was talking to to the, each other right in front of us, like, which one little Wayne? Like which one which one I'm little Wayne? You know what I mean? It was like, uh, I think it's that one. They're like, okay, and they moved me to the side like that. And it was like, yeah, that we putting the gun on you. So, you know, once my lawyer explained it to me how this how shit work out there and like, you know, like we probably probably we won't we may not win, you know, and I was like, that's too much for me. Probably it's too much, you know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, I'll go ahead and sit down for them little eight months. I ain't tripping. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have been through a whole lot worse. I feel you. Yeah, I was married before. <laughs> that was a joke, my nigga. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke, my nigga. That was the most beautiful experience ever. <laughs> beautiful. I'm talking about the marriage. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. And the wonderful kids. Yes. Can we can we talk about two of your he most? He said I joked before I came out here, so don't be trying to exactly trying to <laughs> like he said not that you know I'm joking, my nigga. Tell you kick my motherfucking ass. Speaking of authority, because you always say like you're your own man, you don't like rules, you used to doing your own thing. Yeah. Everybody loves the deposition video that you did uh, with the, it leaked out on TMZ when you did an interview. I do not recall. Well, no. so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, to the best of my recollection, yeah, I cannot like, recall. Yeah, I don't know what you're All right, I won't about. be saving yeah. the real world. And then, like, it seemed like you're extra motivated now, too. Like, you have a skateboard chain on, too. Like, obviously um, getting my into... My homie bought me this. Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, but getting into, getting into skateboarding was... And becoming a very important part of your lifestyle. Like, it wasn't just like... You know, I'm, I'm dedicated to anything I do. So, you know, like, any y'all know that. Like, anything I do, I'm, I do it in abundance. So, once I start... I say, man, let me get me a skateboard, and psh, you know, I I ain't gonna do nothing once. So I put a skate fucking ramp on my roof, and you know, <laughs> start it, busting my ass every day till I got it right. And um, I can't stay off that motherfucker. I had to. I've been off my fucking board for like, man, too long because I've been in the studio every day. So I I got to skate like uh, probably three or four days ago with my nigga Greg. I mean, my nigga um, Ryan Desenzo. And them, it's the Canadian niggas. I went skated with them at this little spot in Cali, and that was my that was my first time skating in a minute. So, have you ever hurt yourself bad with skating? Yeah, y'all yeah, niggas know I was on stage with six stitches and sti nine oh. stitches and shit. Went on stage, I didn't dislocated my shoulder, I cracked my heel, yeah, bust my shit on camera. I put all that shit out, bust my shit, I bust my face when I went skating with Luska. I bust the side of my face and shit. Yeah, you gon' you gotta get your ass back up. First thing you want to do is you mad as hell at that motherfucker. Whatever you ain't laying, if it was some steps, you get right back up like, you mother bitch, hold on. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> so you get up and you land that shit. That's how it is. What was the best, what's the best moment you've had skating? Like when you, was there some kind of trick you pulled off you never thought you could do? Like for those that don't understand the lifestyle, like what was like? Uh, yeah, I wanted, uh, our front side 180 to five stair at uh, Stevie Williams, DGK Park, Skate Park. Um, he had five. He had a five stair set. That's just mean five stairs, and um, I 180'd off it, and that was crazy for me to do. 180, obviously, is you know 180. Turn your body up, yeah. So I 180'd off that motherfucker, and that was psh, nigga. Psh, you heard me? Couldn't tell you nothing. What? But then I 180'd up a gap, so at the um, barracks too. So I was pretty hype about that too. But anything you do once you land that motherfucker you that's your that's your next best feel you know what i mean if you was to ask any skater nigga, like what's your best nigga tell you nigga the one i landed last night you know what i mean just like if you used to ask me you know like what's the best pussy you know what I mean? like the one i fucked last night <laughs> You talk about that a lot. People are like, why does Wayne talk about, you know, I, why wouldn't I? pussy monster shit? Like, so much pussy thing. talk, I like, Wayne. Hey, I heard that. Wayne, there's like, a lot of pussy Wayne talk. Wayne say talk about pussy too much. Oh, what the fuck else are y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what you want me to talk about? The world? Like, come on, man. The world, Craig? The world, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of... But, so. you know, I ain't no goddamn professor. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't know. That ain't what I set out to do. Y'all got to remember, man. I started doing this shit at eight, man. What I'm So at eight, like, I'm not... At eight, I ain't trying to tell you what's right from wrong in my raps. You know what I mean? And I'm still not trying to tell you what's right from wrong. I'm, that's not my job. I'm a musician. I do that with my kids. You know what I mean? You better do that with yours. You know what I mean? I hope yours, your, your parents done it with you. You know what I mean? Like, that ain't my damn job. You can so, clap if you want. You can clap. You know what I mean? So clap. other than that... <laughs> That's why, and they ask why I talk about that. That's, that's what, that's what, it's my motherfucking music. 
Do you put the it's my microphone? I could talk about whatever the hell. I, am I supposed to talk about something you want to hear or something you like? If you want to hear something about what you want to hear, then you better go find somebody talking about what the fuck you want to hear. If you want to hear something about some pussy, I'm your man, nigga. <laughs> I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Like, he's safe, but I don't, this is music, man. I'm not trying to, this ain't no, I ain't giving no lecture. I know shit like, I don't know, they be like, he say pussy too much. Well, I, I can say it as many times as I want. I come from the South, man. Say I come now, from Wayne. Say it right pussy. Now. You don't remember Luke <laughs> and Two Live Crew? Shit like that, man. I come from shit like that. Bust down and shit like that, you know? Nasty bitch and shit like that. Three Six <laughs> Mafia and shit, you know, slob on my nah. Like, come on, on a car, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get it. Like, what you want me to talk about? Like, so, you know, so sometimes my nigga like, they got a nigga like Taz. He gonna come with a song and be like, he gonna come with the hook already on there. You know, he gonna come with a song and the hook already somebody on there talking about, you know, the world. And, 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 and so, you know, and that's, that make a nigga have to do a, a song about the world and shit or about another subject and shit. So that's, that's but Taz's to you, job. More pussy rap. What? The whole album called Pussy, man. That, that, now, that'll make me do a solo crazy. album. It's that'll make me do another solo album. If you let me do a solo album called Pussy, I'm, that's, I'm in, but, but, out here. And we'll do five of them bitches. Pussy in one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, but that's the difference when you ask me, um, why is it, why, what I mean by I'm going hard on this album is because I do... I actually listened to what the people said, to what people saying, and then, you know, Taz and things like that. You know, they, they don't even, they tiptoe around it because they know that, man, he gonna do what he want anyway. So, but you know, they, a person, a nigga like Mac, shout out Mac, he'll let Mac a nigga man. know, you know, Mac will let a nigga know, like, you know, they be saying, you say this too much. Because he know all I know, if he don't come on Sports Center, I don't know. I ain't know it happened. Honestly, if it ain't happened on Sports Center, I did not know it happened. All kind of shit be happening. Like, you ain't heard, you ain't heard you did. You know what I'm saying? I be like, damn, nigga, I ain't. I ain't you know, like, I ain't know. Let me die real quick, then, nigga. All right, so, you know, I, like, I ain't, it ain't crossed the fucking bottom of Sports Center line. Just, you know what I mean? So, I ain't know it happened. So, like I said, but other than that, that's why I'm going about pussy too much. Yeah, you know, it ain't. So, my man, ticker. Mac, will let me know. And so, the, this album, I'm trying to approach, uh, I tr I'm trying to approach other subjects and just trying to make it, you know, I guess, and to them. When I say them, I mean Mac and, and Taz and things like that. People that, I mean, not the credit. To them, it's like, man, they make you a better artist. They make you a bigger artist. And I mean, obviously, that's not what I'm trying to be. And that's what I'm trying to do. But if that's what it does, then so be it. But it's still the trust from your inner circle. Oh, man, I told you. Not, I mean, every single hater wrong. on Twitter. I mean, everything never wrong. Yeah. And when we are wrong, then we wrong together. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. We're going to take some quick questions. Good. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah I ain't tripping yeah. at all. Okay. What's up, Wayne? Um, What's poppin', brother? From Washington, Tacoma, okay. Washington. Um, okay. First, I got to say thank you to Cash Money and Young Money because our first placement was with Nicki Minaj. That got us a platinum plaque and everything. Please Please believe it. it. That Please fly. Believe it. I appreciate it, man. And um, We got a couple other placements, but as an artist, we kind of got the struggle just to get to that next level. So what do you suggest? You know, how do I, how do we keep going on the artist tip? You know what I'm saying? First of all, you already said the first thing to do, and that's keep going. You know what I mean? Let's keep going and believe in what, believe in what you're doing and believe in what y'all doing. And that's, you know what I mean, as long as you believe in it, you'll never stop. No matter whatever stops around you, you'll never stop as long as you believe in it. Cool. Thank you. And one more. Yeah, go ahead. I, this is my first. I never got a chance to see you in person. I just want to know if I can give you my music real yeah, quick. Yeah, give it we'll to, get to yeah, you later. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. <laughs> well, you must get. But you must get that a lot because you you made two superstars, don't. so that, with that comes a heavy price. I, I actually know? don't because I'm never I'm never out like that. Like yeah. I'm, if you ain't at the skate park, uh, <laughs> you, know I mean? you don't get no demos at the skate park. <laughs> nah, nah, them dudes they nah they ain't, they just be running about skating. Yeah. yeah. See that that must be great for you to kind of be in that world that they're, they're not treating you that as little Wayne, so the musician. It's, it's right? not. That's not. It's not about if it's better or nothing like that. If it, but it's different. And it's, it's dope to yeah. me, you know what I mean? Like, I go to their competitions, and, you know, like, they have triple, 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 triple the people we have in here. And they don't, you know, it's, hey, Lil Wayne, hi, how you doing? That nigga just was like, boom. 
But this nigga would trick this other nigga. Now he's back to yeah, what they Yeah, it's about and, what they're doing. And I yeah. love that, man. I'm like, that's what's up. And then when I'm in a park, when it's just us, and it's, you know, everybody cool, and it's you, everybody for you, yeah. that's a difference, man. You know, in, in music, man, it'd be different sometimes. You know I mean, but thank God I'm that artist that everybody know they, I'm cool. You know I mean, I'm yeah. everybody's little homie or big homie or whatever. So other than that, but in skating, man, everybody for you. You fall, you, then they have everybody trying to help you up, you know, then help you teach you how to get it to where you're not going to fall to where, you know what I mean? Like, they stop what they doing. Yeah. Just to show, man, you know, it goes like this, man. You get it, you get it. And, man, motivation, that is the, man, those if motivate, friends and motivating, man, they'll motivate you to jump off a bridge. Man, they motiv I'm talking about, that's why you, when, when you hear me say nine stitches and cracked heels and dislocated shoulders and shit like that, and you like, nigga, you still doing it, be them niggas around you. Nigga, you got it. You yeah, got it, man. I'll get off. Fuck that. You'll get it. It's like, you know, shout out to them niggas, man. All them yeah. niggas. Let's do another question. Another question. I just want to figure out what goes in your mind when you're, you know, selecting your music, like a like beat for, from a producer or something. What, how does that process work for you? It has, to, it has to hit my ear as soon as I hear that, as soon as that motherfucker drop. You know what I mean? As soon as the beat drop, what I mean by that is, you know, beats have intros, but as soon as that beat, the, them drums the come in, comes yeah, in. as soon as that bottom come in, it has to catch my ear, and I have to hear something, I have to hear an idea, something to it already. If that don't... If it don't work like that, then it usually don't work for me. But then again, then you have people like Tez that's going to come in with a song and with a vibe and with an idea, with a plan, and I just fix I figure out my way in that. Yeah. Cool. Next question, next question. Because sometimes Tez be picking whack-ass beats, but I still got to <laughs> rap on them and shit. You dig? What's the biggest argument you had with, 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 that you recall with Tez about a song and... You ended up right or he ended up right? Like, what, what's one that you really went to Taz war Tez don't write songs, boy. Say that again? Tez don't write no damn songs. No, no, no. Uh, about a song you, uh, uh, no, you, song you like wanted to use. Oh, uh, no, no, no. And he ended up, like, you was against it, but it ended up working, or... That's the story of my life, probably, then, with him. <laughs> yeah. All the songs, I always be like, you know, you sure? You know, I, I might want to go with some something else, but I trust in his word, like I told you. Thanks. Yeah. All right, next question. The first time I saw you, oh yeah, oh. skateboards, skateboard. Yeah, <laughs> watch out now. You gonna do that? You gonna do that? The first time I saw you, I was like, damn, he's awesome. So I started listening more. Yeah. But my question is, how do you come up with your songs? Man, I still question. That's the same question I ask myself too, man. Shout out to you, man. Thank you, you and your little homie or your little brother with the board, man. I appreciate y'all, man. One time for them, man. Yeah, but now nah, the answer to that is, man, I just be me, man. I just be me and come up whatever I come up with. Are you still don't... Yeah. <laughs> you still don't write this stuff down, right? Oh, no, I can't write it down, no. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's natural, so, you know, so I, I mean, I, I never, I wrote it, I used to write my music when I was younger, and I did it because it was cool to do it, but I never to had to. To have the pad, yeah, it like you yeah. was in there grinding it. Yeah. Yeah. Next question, next question. So, Wayne, um, you mentioned earlier, you said your stage performance back in the day was the birth of Lil Wayne. Yeah. And um, I always felt that, you know, for a long time, you were kind of at, like, a good plateau in your career. Mm -hmm. But I always felt that, you know, can you talk about the importance of your verse or your placement on Beyonce Soldier back in 2004? Man, yeah. I always felt that was the rebirth of that Lil Wayne. Is that... Can you talk about that? I didn't, definitely a more, a more yeah, I didn't look... I didn't... I mean, I didn't look at it as the rebirth, but, but I, I see what you... I right. see the word you mean. I see why you use that word rebirth, but um, because I said that was the birth of Austin. Yeah, but I looked at it like it was definitely a, my platform. That was definitely, I mean, for a birth, a new birth. Yeah, like you said, new, it was definitely that that set me off right there. So, I, I always, like you said, I forgot to even mention that that song right there, that verse, them little eight bars right there, yeah. <laughs> that got me there, boy. Why yeah. did it feel so right? Like you got cash Beyonce. money and like, but you nailed it. Like you was real concise with it and like nailed oh, it. Oh no, I just do what it. I do. I just did yeah. my thing. That's what I do. Period. But I was just saying, if you ask me why, it was Beyonce. It was that yeah. shit was big, man. It was, that's the child soldier. It was popping. It's right. a big one. Yeah. For you and Ti. Yeah, we was on that. We was there early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the second thing I also wanted to ask is from. 500 degrees to the Carter, uh, mm -hmm. I felt like your flow had changed. Yeah. What was the catalyst in that moment that sparked the evolution of your style? Because before it was more kind of goggled, but in the Carter, it was more concise, and it continued on with the whole album. 
there's an answer. Um, the answer for that is I actually used to couldn't rap how I wanted to rap. What I mean by that is I would have a rap book or maybe, and that's how mixtapes came about for me. Yeah. I would have a rap book with a whole gang of raps that I can't even rap to baby in them because they don't want to hear that flow. They don't want to hear nothing. I'm talking, you know what I mean? They don't want to hear that. And, you know, in New Orleans, we had to have that, you know, what it is, that, you know, that was our thing. That's what we do, you know. So, but it, that's what happened. After five, you know, 500 degrees, I was still having to be that cash money, New Orleans trend setting, whatever. Then from then, baby, the car, I'm doing my own thing now. And, you know, I was rapping how I want to rap on that bitch. And that's what happened. Talk yeah. a little about, we got to get out of here soon, but talk about the mixtape. I mean, obviously, you revolutionized the mixtape game. I, I mean, part of your whole discography is like yeah. these legendary mixtapes. I mean, yeah. you know, we're proud of how many studio albums you have, but talk about what your legacy is in terms of that, like in terms of just those mixtapes. And like, you gave out so much great music for free to the people. Yeah, man, because I just love working. I just love doing it. I mean, I love doing, rapping. And so, shit, I, every, every time at that time there was a song come out, I'd be like, man, I should have been on this song. <laughs> only one way to fix my that. Beat. Yeah, only one way to fix that. Go show them what you should have did on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So before we get out of here, Wayne, so now looking back at it, like you said, like if this is the end, if this is the last solo album, at least for a while, like, you know, and start to put your career in kind of this overall perspective, like, what do you feel your legacy is and like how would you like to be remembered musically? Um, I would just say I just I would like to be remembered as a humble, good soul, a good spirit, good soul, thing like that. You know what I mean? Like a... Uh, if I had to, you know, like a, a Willie Nelson, you know, just like a, just remember just everybody fuck with you, like a Snoop Dogg, you know what so I mean? So much like, the character as much as the, as the music, yeah, the character you know, of the man. Yeah, I ain't, you know, before I used to be shooting for um for more of a Biggie, a Biggie, Pac, J type um you know, title, you know, I used to shoot for that, but now I think my, my history already done that. You know what I mean? So now nah, I just, I want to be just remembered as, man, that nigga was cool. He did great ass music and that's who he is. Period. And in sports now, you're your, your first Ballot Hall of Famer to everybody in this world, <laughs> Real shit. Thank you, Weezy. Love, I appreciate man. it, man. Uh. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you for coming out. Thank you, little one. Quick post game uh, thing in there, real quick. I admired you. Look at that. Those guys are cool, man. It felt amazing, man. That was dope. Yeah. You felt it? How'd you yeah. feel? That's cool. Yeah. That was long. I ain't never done much shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but a humble dude, too. I think they got to get to know Little Wayne the man. You know yeah, what I mean? I think yeah. that's important. Like that's you said, like, you know, you proved a lot combatively this hip hop competition, but now it's like, now you look at things from a different perspective, yeah. you know? I and like, I, I thought it was like, like you said, I thought they got the little. Get a little more information that the information that they probably know would have got. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for Out that win. Music. Respect, bro. Love. Keep doing it. Love. Good luck, Carter Five. Thank you. <laughs>